What's up guys? Good evening, this is Ketchup Mustard here once again bringing you another predictions video for EU of ESL. So we have week four, pretty much right around the corner, it's on Wednesday. So two days time, or I guess maybe even less than that at this point. We have taken uh, a lot of your feedback into account and a lot of you guys, you know, they like, you like these videos. I mean, I know they don't really normally bring in the same amount of uh, people checking them out as our normal stuff, but that's totally fine. We're not really worried about that too much. Those of you that watch these, enjoy them, and you want to see our North American predictions. Because of that, we will start doing the North American predictions for you guys. I mean, it's no real effort to make these. It's nice to kind of sit down and give our opinion on how the matches are going to go. Whether we're you know, right or wrong is always up in the end. I'd love to be wrong. You know, I'd love to have a week where we're wrong about everything, and it's just a complete blow up, which will be fantastic. But unfortunately, we actually can't do the North American predictions today because it's Thanksgiving. So the North American side of ESL actually isn't taking place this week. It's going to be all CIS and all EU. In terms of the actual week, it's going to be quite an interesting one. Besides the first game, well, it's 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 again. Well, I guess as usual, as we kind of say, it's it's some new players, some returning ones, but. I mean, we even have one of the one of the fourth top eight games is going to be a, a straight up rematch from last week. Game one. Let's yeah. have a look. We've got uh, Foxy Grandpa and Nivek are going to be playing once again. Now, there's not really so much we can say about this one, to be honest, guys. I mean, these guys played last week, you know, like we said before. Foxy took that very convincingly, very quickly, 3-0. Purely because Nivek, even though he's playing Thunder God Raiden with a very strong 50-50 game, um, very strong corner carry, which we saw, you know, Nivek, as, as he always does, use and make the most out of. Nivek... Didn't go for a single back two in the whole set. He didn't go for a single. He didn't really enforce any 50-50. No, he, he, went, he went for the safe low, but not once did he go for the back two in a mix-up situation. And if you're not doing that in, th in three whole games, then that's showing that you're, you're scared of Foxy, you're scared of his punishes. And uh, you know, un understandably, you're not going to be able to throw it out all the time because, yeah, if it gets blocked, you're giving Kung Lao corner positioning and loads of damage. But to never, ever do it once in three games, that's not the Nivek we saw in Season 1. And if Nivek wants to win this week, I mean, I, I know he's been playing uh, Master of Storms and Displacer in a few streams this week, you know, which would be quite exciting to see. I think if he's going to stick with Thunder God, he's going to have to just really just play ballsy, go for those mix-ups. You, know? you well, can't the, be reserved forever or you will just lose again. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you, you can't really play too timid against a, a player like Foxy because he's just going to go to town on that, especially with someone like Kung Lao, who's as strong as he is. I mean, if you look at the path, we can see Foxy took out pretty much all UK players, actually. Um, a notable player there. He took out Falcon game one um, shouts to YP Falcon unfortunately he didn't really he made it past the first round but then he had to fight Foxy game two which is massively unfortunate really to get you know to get the cream of the crop I suppose in game two but it happens I suppose that that's the way brackets work but Falcon's been doing better each week he's been doing well and unfortunately he's yet to make a top eight because he always just falls ever so slightly short almost like the Bob Grimes syndrome of someone who's really really good at the game but just fights a killer right before top eight and doesn't make it unfortunately in this case it was round two but at the same time you've got to remember that you know you are going to fight a killer on the way to top eight and if you don't beat them then you know to, to be the devil's advocate the other guy deserves it over you if he beats you in the... In yeah, the uh, everyone understands that, of course. And then to look at Nivek's path, actually an interesting path here. He took out E.D. Ixy. So a lot of you UK heads would recognise Ixy, a really, really strong Cassie player. Hasn't really been doing well in ESL, unfortunately, but he is a very strong player. We know him quite well. Um, but he has really been falling short in ESL, unfortunately. But he did take him out round one, so good stuff to Nivek there. And he took out Salty Mikadi and Rampage Lex, two guys that have made top eights before. So Nivek has fought his way back into the top eight, and he's looking to be in really good form. I just hope that his execution is a bit better, because a lot of his problems last week against Foxy pretty much came from the fact that not only was he playing too timidly, but when he actually landed a hit on Foxy very very costly combo drops um we've seen nivek fight against people like madden on their streams recently nivek's been using master of storms and displacer uh whether he's practicing those variations to potentially use them in tournament who knows we might actually see this might be the time nivek decides to branch out and start playing the field a bit with raiden and trying out all the variations to see what works best thank you for literally repeating what i said <laughs> but it's that's that's exactly what you were saying though like i think it's really important to to really point out that it's a big deal. He might not go Thunder God this time. And we never see people not go Thunder well, God. Well, if, if, if you're scared of doing the 50-50s, which is very much kind of what you... And I know universally he has 50-50s, but Thunder God is what makes them safe. So if you're not going to go for the 50-50s, don't pick Thunder God. Try something else. Try Master of Storms where your blocks, you can, you can activate the Zorbs whenever. I don't, I don't know. It, clearly he's the Raiden Specialist. He's going to know. But in the current state of the game, my vote does go to Foxy. You know, it's a fair assumption. I mean, it was very convincing last week. The, the one redeeming thing, you know, the difference would be that Nivek and Foxy have played before. Nivek has defeated Foxy before. But in ESL particularly, 
Foxy does take over. But going by what I literally saw last week, like yeah, a week definitely, ago, definitely. my vote goes to Foxy. Unless Nivek tidies himself up and, and plays the way we saw him play before, my vote's going to go to Foxy. Okay, so game two is going to be Blitzkast versus Mitzwones. This is a really interesting one. So it's going to be Germany versus Germany. I don't think we've actually really seen that much, uh, at all, really. Well, initially we thought that, you know, what what do we say about this? Because Blitzkurst is a Quan Chi player, apparently, according to Madzin and Nivek, but we've never seen him play before. And initially I thought, well, you know, if we if we look at his path, like, will we recognise the people he beat? Because sometimes you know, it can happen. However, he had to beat one sex, Gibson, uh, and Hellbringer. He, it says he beat Taco, but he didn't. Taco was at uh, Test Your Pride over the weekend. The Italian major. Yeah, it was at an Italian major. It was the first big Italian major for MKX. So, you know, huge shouts to Krathen for taking that. He was another player we see play uh, Aaron Black in the EU ESL leagues. But um, Taco did get second in that tournament. Yeah, he, he did, he did. But, you know, what I'm saying is Taco couldn't play here, so... Blitzkurst beating Taco, just ignore that completely because it didn't happen. But he did beat Hellbringer, uh, he, he beat Wonder Sex, and he beat Gibson. These are three players that I recognise, and I know um, at the very least, uh, you know, not, not to accidentally trash anyone, but I know that Wonder Sex and Hellbringer are two decent players. So in order for Blitzkurst to be here, you know, he, he must know what he's doing. But if he plays Quan Chi, I've heard from Mazin that he plays Warlock, and Nivek apparently had to fight him before, and he played some of that. So I think that we to might... me suggests that we have a Quan Chi player that plays multiple variations for matchup stuff, and hopefully, we hopefully. don't really see that. So just by going by someone saying that he, one person says he plays Warlock and one person says he plays Summoner, that could be one of two things: he plays Warlock in casuals and it always uses Summoner in tournament, or he is one of the few Quan Chi players that mains potentially Summoner and goes Warlock when the matchup calls for it, or he just plays Quan Chi in general and uses the right variation for what he deems as the right matchup. So, if I would love, you know, to be honest, there was, I would love to see nothing more than Blitzkurst pull out a Warlock and do really well. I would love to see well, we, a Warlock Well, we're yet to see a Warlock do well in the ESL. In any and tournament, ever. No, that, that, that's what I mean. Like It's it, it's simple as that. We, Warlock Quan is a character that is amazingly good. He's just not as cheap as some. So slept on. So slept on, in but my opinion. Blitzkurst has to come up against Mitsuwones. Yes. Is, yeah, we, oh, we, sorry, we guys. Really <laughs> Bang in the table. Mitsuwones kind of uh, speaks for himself, really. You know, he has this incredible rushdown play. However, th this is a second top eight, so you know, huge craps, uh, congrats to him for making it two weeks running. However, when we saw him fight under Jim last week, that set was lost because Jim just blocked. He just sat there and blocked, didn't move, just waited for Mitsuwens to hang himself, and he did. It was quite a remarkable set in some senses because under Jim, very much, really, he did nothing but block. Like, if you ever go back and watch those matches, um, you will realise in the neutral, Under Jim does throw out things when he knows it's it's going to get hit or blocks. But for the most part, he literally just sat there and blocked. He waited for Mitsuo to do jump kick teleport, you know, sweep distance low minion minions that he can armor through, things that he can block and then armor interrupts. Like Mitsuo basically just in the neutral um, would just do would... punishable things, and he paid for it. And if he does that against a Quan Chi, then that's that's the worry, isn't it? I mean, we we at first didn't really know how to call this, but we've we've kind of decided that this is purely going to come down to. Who gets their first game? The first game is going to be so crucial in this set because if Mitsuwones plays too unsafe against Summoner, one punish from Summoner could potentially lose the whole game. You know, you, you never know. And we've seen in the past, Mitsuwones can kind of crack under pressure, I suppose. Like, a lot of predictable teleports and stuff. If Blitzgurst is good at baiting and waiting for mistakes and putting the pressure on and then waiting for you to just try and get out in the one time you have to get out, it's going to be difficult for Mitsuwones. But... I want to point out, he took out Sumerian and Storm for the second week in a row. He yeah, actually he beat Storm the second twice. Time he's beat Storm, so he's doing well for himself this week. But I think I'm not going to predict here, purely because it would be unfair, because I haven't seen Blitzkurst play. But the way I predict the set could go, based on how Quan is as a character in the matchup and how I've seen Mitsuwones play, it's going to be heavily dictated by how Game 1 goes in that set. It's going to be dictated by how prepared Blitzkurst is to just expect the unexpected, I think. I mean, that, that's really how it's going to go down. So that's that's that, guys. That's that. Game three. Now, this is, is another interesting one. We have Costas and Harris and that pro stunner. Stunner is... Uh, some of you guys may have heard of him. Um, he kicks around a lot of streams. Um, he plays the game online on Xbox all the time. We've played with him multiple times. Um, we can vouch for this guy. Uh, at least not in tournament. He's actually a very, very solid player. Really, really good. Um, he plays a mean reptile. Really, really like... I like his reptile. I don't know whether he used Reptile to get to this point. But, I assume he did. But he is a very solid player. Um, and we, we kept saying that we really would like to see him in a top 8 because he's good enough. And this is his week of that. He's finally got a top 8. He finds himself against Costas and Harris. Now, Costas and Harris and um, K-Top or Ketofdove. 
They are brothers from Greece. Uh, they live together. They play together. They train together. And it's kind of the, the funny story, really, of one of them gets top eight and has to fight the guy that took out the brother to get to top eight. You know, like the exact we saw same things happening this week. We saw last week Zarakamaka beat Costas and Harris, and then K Top had to fight Zarakamaka. And now we pretty much see it's completely been flipped around. So if we look at the path, we can see Stun actually defeated Kitofthope, Shuffles and Lanky Shakes, and Costas and Harris to beat Use for Glue, White Black, and Mr. Aquari. So three season one veterans, really, to be honest. Um, three season, people in season one that have that did very well. Useful Glue, unfortunately, ever so slightly seems to not quite get that top eight status just yet, but he's on, he's on good form for it. Um, the interesting thing here is, so Costas and Harris, um, we know that his main characters are Sub-Zero, Aaron Black, and Kung Lao. Well, he, he told us um, the day before this was played out that his mains um, that he only played was Sub-Zero, uh, Aaron Black, and Kung Lao. But then, apparently, according to uh, White Black and Use for Glue, um, he actually pulled out a pocket Predator. That's really interesting to me, because we know that Predator's really good, but, I mean, I assume he must just have a lot of faith in his uh, Predator to be able to use it in, in ESL. Obviously, his brother plays Predator as well, so it's not going to be difficult for him to learn, because he's obviously just going to learn off his brother. They're, well, they're I guess person, it's like so. if I was to learn the Sorcerer Quan Chi of you. And then it would if, be if, easy for you to learn. If, if, I, if I had lost and then said, you know, I'm, I'm going to try I'm going to try out my Quan. So it's Ketchup Storm. But that's, what, that's what I'm thinking. Like The interesting thing here is, if we see it in the top eight, if we see Stunner take out Costas' first character, or maybe Costas will go straight into using Predator, who knows? It's going to be quite interesting for us to go... He plays these characters, and then he pulls out something totally different. Well, I, I would be surprised for us not to see his Predator um, tomorrow, purely on the fact that out of two, of two of his three qualifying matches, he pulled out Predator when it wasn't going well. So for him to do it to qualify, but not do it on the big stage, if he loses game one, I would be very surprised to see him not change. Yeah, definitely. I mean, Stunner, we know he can play a number of characters, but his main is going to be Reptile. So in terms of who's going to take the set, I actually really think that Stunner could take it. I mean, this is purely guys coming from personal experience. <clears throat> Excuse me, and it's not going to be biased in any way. I didn't even know Stunner was from the UK until very, very recently. This is purely through uh, my experience of actually playing both players. I've played um, against both these guys, and I really think that Stunner, at least in a in a, a three out of five setting, I think that Stunner shows a lot more of what his character does faster. If you know what I mean, like he's always keeping you guessing early on. The one issue Stunner seems to have, at least when I play him, is I feel like once he's been adapted to, he kind of struggles to then get the upper hand again. You know, once he's been figured out, uh, I'm, I'm kind of yet to see him excel up and then sort of pull out something else that the opponent wasn't ready for. You know, it, it, I really feel like he would need to learn on how, to, once he's been downloaded, basically, how to then continue moving on and then become harder to predict. Well, it's, all, it's almost similar to how, how we uh, we said it's going to come down to Blitzgurst and Mitsuwomes. If game one goes heavily in the favour of Costas, I'm not sure if, if uh, Pro Stunner could, could bring it back because we know that we, Pro Stunner is a great, a great player and plays a lot of characters. Um, we've not really seen him on the back foot before in a tournament setting. And, uh, you know, he's against Costas. So if, if he loses game one heavily against, let's say it is... Grandmaster. Is Grandmaster, I believe? I think it's Grandmaster. Ways. Yeah, so if, and Grandmaster Sub's a tough character to come back from in terms of adapting, because it's very hard to differentiate between Grandmaster Sub-Zeros, yeah. especially when the clone's out, because you know, once a clone's out, Grandmaster is Grandmaster. But you know, if, if you lose heavily to that kind of gameplay, how do you make that adaptation? Yeah, so I think uh, I would assume Stunner could take this one, but in all honesty, it could be either one. It really could be either one. I mean, maybe we will finally see a brother get revenge. We haven't really seen that yet. <laughs> Well, it would suck, because these guys, unfortunately, k has failed to avenge his brother. So and there's, there's no Zarakamaka this week, too. Bear in mind, there is no Zarakamaka. I mean, I'm assuming he couldn't get the time no, off work. It is, he, he just couldn't end it this week. He couldn't end it this time. For, okay, uh, so time that, that's been good for some of the other guys, giving him a chance to get some points in. So, the final game, Derpy Mosquito and Madsen. So How have they played before? Um, I'm sure Mosquito and Madsen they played for last week. I think they played pre top eight in one of the weeks and Madsen took it. Yeah, I think that's how I, I'm I'm fairly certain. I mean we could be wrong, but I'm I'm pretty sure I saw in one of these pre brackets that we did see Madsen take out Mosquito in the past. Plus, bear in mind, Blood God I, I don't know what character Madsen's gonna go against Tanya, but Probably Blood God. Blood God's gonna be interesting because obviously damage she, mitigation. She just doesn't hurt that much. Yeah, she doesn't do insane combo damage. And also if she catches Madsen pressing buttons during the wreckers and he's got the damage mitigation up, it's just gonna do nothing to him. 
Like, even if she's got him in the corner and she's doing the wrecker pressure that everyone sees all the time, if there is a damage mitigation and a sun ray in the corner, you're not doing anything to it. I mean, that that is the one thing Blood God does really well, is the ability to just shut down the usefulness of staggered strings and pressure. Because if he puts the sun ray and the damage mitigation on himself... You have to he's, stop. Yeah, you, you really can't do that. You just give him meter as well. He's getting all of his health back, you're taking damage by doing it, and he's building meter. So Tanya is a character that, you know, and especially a, a player like Derpy that, you know, he, he really... He, I guess, no beat around the bush, he's good with Tanya. He knows what he's doing. Yeah, very, very good. He's, he's a very competent Tanya player. Tanya wants to do the records on block. He wants to do them. Now, they hit twice, I know they armor break, but that doesn't matter against Blood God, because he's not going to be arming you anyway. But if he's going to be blocking you all the time, and you're just constantly giving him bar because Tanya wants you to block, because she's used to chipping you to death, she all of a sudden can't do that anymore. And her damage isn't going to work as much, her projectile doesn't exactly do as much as other people's, and again... Well, he would just parry that anyway. Yeah, he's, he's going to parry that for days. Um, he's got amazing buttons, amazing buttons to deal with her. Like, in the neutral, Coco can't wins. That down for is God like it. Low profile is the, uh, the wreckers. Uh, yeah, very hard, Very hard for her to get... Um, any clean real punishes on deck, and unless we see him going for the just you know the fifty fifties, but again you're gonna be spending bar to do that effectively or to get big damage, and even then if he's got mitigation, it's still not gonna hurt him. So okay, I think purely based on the fact that they've played already, Mazin took it, and I I can see that matchup just not being good for Tanya. My vote goes to Mazin. I wouldn't say it's a bad matchup. I just think that Blood God's got answers for it. That's all. Yeah, but that's all. Yeah, I don't think it. I don't think it sucks for her. I just don't think it sucks for him either. And yeah, Blood God's that, and that's an important. That's a very very important factor. I'm gonna go Madsen as well. Like you said, they've fought before. Madsen's won. I don't see Blood God getting destroyed by Tanya. That's even if Madsen goes Blood God. He's gonna be unpredictable all up until character set because you're not gonna know. Am I fighting Sub Zero or am I gonna fight Blood God? Either way, he's really good with both characters. So it's not like you need to be worried about one more than the other because he's good with both of them you know so that's that that's going to be madzin i think madzin blitz girls and mitzwains we can't really kill yeah, we, we we can't call game two so our folks go foxy grandpa for game one no vote for game two because we can't really make a prediction fairly because we haven't seen blitz Girls play um pro stunner was kind of the unanimous thing for, between the two of us but you know. blitz i think it was it was pro stunner but only marginally over because we just don't know uh, how they would adapt to each other. But even then, I think that might be a partially because we've just seen Prost on the play more than we've seen Costas play. And then Madsen for reasons we just explained to you guys. So that brings us to a close here, guys. Uh, week four, uh, the top eight does start tomorrow. It's uh, the Netherrealm Twitch channel, so make sure you guys are checking it out. Like we said before, there will be no NA tomorrow due to the Thanksgiving weekend. It's going to be just CIS and EU. We're already halfway through, so that's pretty crazy. It's but... funny how we say tomorrow because it's technically past 12 here. I guess so. That's so strange. I mean, yeah. it's, it's Wednesday. For anyone around the world, just to prevent time differences, it will be Wednesday we're going to be doing this. Um, but as we've said at the start of the video, we would be doing North America, but it's Thanksgiving. So North America ESL isn't actually happening this week, but rest assured, Our we will be predictions doing... will start next week. Yeah, we will start doing North American predictions due to, we'll say, popular demand. Thank you very much for watching, guys. We'll see you on Wednesday. Make sure you guys tune in. Uh, it's going to be a good one. Again, it's be very unpredictable. We have some new faces here, which I'm really excited to see in a tournament setting. So thank you very much for watching this. Hopefully, you guys can give us some of your opinions on who you think is going to take this. And that's that. Thank you very much. Don't forget See to like, comment, guys. and sub. See you later.